Alright everyone Maharib is here. And before starting the video, just to let you guys know that this video contains facts, realities, and logical arguments and counter-arguments, and straightforward objective truths that may contain political, historical, and real-life situations, which may or may not be of everyone's likings. So it is encouraged not to watch this video if you don't intend to be a part of this discussion. This is not necessarily going to be a rant video, as I will just make it as to the point as possible, and will expose and answer most of the community's problems, as well as Genshin's situation and tactics. But let's be honest here, you can't expect me to not go full rant on some rather interesting individuals who have everything but a few brain cells. So take it as a disclaimer, you don't need to watch the video if you don't want to. My next video will be a little lighthearted to brighten everyone's mood, you can watch that instead. But I believe it's important to end this discussion once and for all, and to show you what my stance is in all of what is happening in this community. And with all that said, let's start the video with the list of characters that are whitewashed by Genshin Impact. From Sumeru, we have Ibn al-Haytham, Kava the Blacksmith, Farazan, Layla, Kusanali, and Rukka Devita, Nilafer, Dori Sangama Bey, and Muhammad al tinaari From Natlan, we have Kinich, Salali, Chaska, Ororan, and Mavuka. I can create a whole video on detailed reasoning as to how they all are whitewashed and poorly represented. And I am not answering to any comment trying their best to justify these characters as good presentation. You'll need to shut up. I'll be creating this like a question-answer video, so you can actually understand the full picture and don't have any misunderstandings at the end of the video. But first let me tell you who am I to talk in this matter, and why do I care so much? I am a South Asian who has close ties even with Arabs and Middle East from my ancestry and origins. I share Indian Muslim culture, and I am very well versed in the values of culture for their people. And as someone who looks like Sino or Sethos, and born and live in Sumeru Forest, you cannot expect me to not talk about this topic. It just doesn't feel right for me to see all Sumeru Forest characters as white as I have never seen anywhere in my life when it should be representing me and my people. As for Natlan, African and Latin Americans look a lot like my own brothers and sisters. Just by looking at those people, I feel a type of connection from them with myself. We are not as different as anyone might think. So it's just right for me to talk on their behalf as well. Who knows if I really share some of my blood with them? Or is it the similarity I see in them that makes me kind of fond of these people? They just feel like my own people, or distant relatives. Anyways, I just wanted to make this video because it just feels right to me. My origins are diverse, and I take my culture and religion very seriously. Something very few people can understand from my audience, and maybe only those people are watching my video after the disclaimer. But I know what diversity actually means, and it keeps me connected to the people of different cultures, just by pure gut feeling. Who the hell knows if I do my DNA test, it turns out that I am 35% Arab, 40% Indian, 10% African, and 10% Latin. And then I ask what about the other 5%, and they reply stop eating rice, you become 5% Chinese. Huh? Come on guys it's not rice, it's biryani. But, but, biryani is rice too. I call it the biryani factor. Anyways let's start with question number one. Why is cultural representation that big of a deal in Genshin Impact? This is one of the most commonly asked question, but has the most straightforward answer. Genshin Impact has always been open for their representation based on different people and cultures from real life. It is not just limited to the characters, but also from music, to the landscape, to the way their NPCs and enemies are designed, etc., and Genshin has always been very strict for what they have been doing. This is evident by the fact how Gaming is purely designed to keep the concept of Wusho dancing, which holds significance in their culture or the fact that they hired professional opera singer to sing for Yunjin. They even decided to add that exact singing for the global release as well. Or the fact that Zhongli was directly buffed, because he represents a certain group of people. Chinese to be precise. Not only that, but they have very accurate representations from a lot of characters other than just China. For example, Fontaine characters. Each and every character from Fontaine actually looks like the theme they were going for from the start. No one complained for the characters being white in Fontaine because it represents France and Europe, and they are not colored. But to see that a Natlanian is no different than a Fontanian just doesn't seem right. Think about it. If Sethos was released as an Inazuma character, or a little brother of Ayato, or something along those lines, wouldn't that feel wrong? Or for example they create Ayaka and Kokomi and Yemiko and Raiden Shogintan, wouldn't people of Japan feel like they are represented badly? It's the same with Natlan. Natlan was introduced as a nation that represents the people of Latin America, and West Africa. Salali is an Aztec-originated name. She being white is exactly similar to Ningguang being black. 
If these were the nations Hoyo creates by themselves, like you can see in almost every Esekai anime etc, where the world building is entirely different from real life, and those characters don't represent any ethnicity or group of people from real life, then no one would complain about skin color or designs etc, but Genshin is not like that. They have been pretty consistent with what they go for. So if they can commit themselves fully on characters that represent certain parts of the world, and then whitewash the characters that were supposed to represent other parts of the world, this is a big deal. But then another question arises. What is the limit that should not be crossed when it comes to depiction of certain regions, or characters, or eras? When it comes to fantasy worlds, we all can understand that not everything can be fully depicted from real life, even if it represents different people. For example, hair color. We know anime has this unspoken rule for hair to be of a variety of different colors, and it's normal. Same with the restrictions posed by the game itself. Like, all of their characters must share these five standard models. No one ever complained about these kinds of things because it is fiction after all. Have you even seen anyone complaining about why Tainaari has fox ears and tail? I mean, I don't remember Muhammad al Tainaari to have a fox-like appearance. But we understand that it's not real world, and in this fictional world, it is normal. Or we can call it within the limitations of creative freedom set by the world of Teyvat itself. But you can still know from where this character is from, just by looking at the elements used in this character's design. Place Charlotte and Amber side by side, and you instantly know they both give you different vibes of different people. Just like these elements are essential to make these characters distinct from each other, skin color is also one of those important, or I can say, most important and essential element that must be used to identify and represent different people. If you place Clorin and Chaska side by side, you can't even see the difference. This is outside of those rules and limitations set by the world of Teyvat. We can agree that a world of fiction is a world of fiction with creative freedom, but it has its own limitations that need not be exceeded. Otherwise characters won't feel like they belong to that region, or the world itself. And with that we can have another question. Why when other games do that, it's fine, and no one talks about it. But when Genshin does that, everyone starts talking. You know what? It's a fair question. But the answer is even easier to give. First of all, just because no one else talks bad about some other game having the same problem, doesn't mean you should also keep quiet. But, there is another reason to that as well. As I said earlier, Genshin has always been mimicking real life, and has always been pretty consistent and serious about it. Other games don't necessarily do that. For example in God of War, there are a lot of mystical creatures taken from different mythologies, but they don't represent different group of people. Or I can explain it like this. Take the world of Konosuba. Now if a character in this world is created by taking a little bit of inspiration from West Africa, but that character is made white, not everyone will care. That character is not representing anybody, it just has some elements in it that are inspired from Africa. That doesn't make him African, or make him a representation of all African people. But in Natlan or Sameru, these characters are the direct target of presentation. You can't just take a little bit of elements from that region and make that character white. It doesn't work here. That's the difference between an entirely fictional world created from scratch by your own imagination, and the world of Teyvat that is a clear depiction of real-life places and people and culture. Something that a lot of dumb brains cannot seem to understand. Now don't get me wrong, I don't care if a character is taken from some mythology or is a bad representation of some so-called deity. Any depiction of so-called god that can be drawn into a picture by a person's imaginations is nothing more than a fictional character to me. It holds absolutely zero significance in my eyes. My only concern is the presentation of people. It doesn't matter to me if this character looks like this character or not, but it does matter to me that this character is a poor representation of these human beings. And by culture, I don't mean the mystical beasts or whatever. I just mean how those people dress and how those people look and act, etc. Now let's talk about a question I wanted to answer as a designer myself. Does black characters not look good? I know this should not even be a question, but they indeed have all the tools to make black characters beautiful. We have seen this already in the form of Candace and Deya, etc. Though I know a lot of people don't like the design of Sinyan, or Deya by extension, and are just afraid because if they will say it out loud, others will call them racist. Trust me it doesn't work like that. If you don't like a character's design, you can share your opinion if you want, there is nothing wrong with that. I also think Sinyan could have been better if she was white, and had her hairstyle changed. That doesn't mean I am racist, it's just how I feel. And at the same time, I still remember how many people pulled for Sino just because of his design. He is an amazing example of cultural representation. And out of all male characters in the entire game, the best design for me personally is the design of Sethos. A fine example of if you create a culturally accurate design for a character, it does not look bad at all. 
But no, dark skin characters don't look as good as white skin characters according to Eastern point of view. Especially in China and Japan, from where most of their audiences come from. I am sorry, but that's just the reality. They are racially biased. But now, even Japanese and Chinese themselves are talking about how out of line Genshin has already gone. A lot of voice actors and content creators have also spoken about it. And Genshin don't have any excuse for not making dark skin characters. So we can already see this is a serious issue. Their mindset that dark skin characters do not look good must be called out for and addressed. I mean, look at that. This is just too beautiful. I can't say that for you, but I will sell my kidney to pull for her if she looked like that. Goddamn, is she horribly beautiful. When I saw this, I lost my mind. This artist needs a raise. This is just too lovely. And look how culturally accurate it is. Not only that, but when you can see that the enemies are more culturally appropriate than playable characters, it just feels like we are the villains. I mean, can you imagine how important samurais are for Japanese culture? Samurais are the historical heroes of Japan. But in Inazuma, they're our enemies. Why? It's the same with the Aramites. They look like they should be the playable characters of Samaru. Even Natlon enemies will be dark-skinned for the most part. Just look at this. This is a Natlon NPC, and look at his skin color. This is a slap on the face of everyone who always says Genshin is fiction and don't take elements from different cultures and people. They can make dark-skinned NPCs and dark-skinned enemies, but somehow dark-skinned playable characters don't align with their beauty standards. How ironic. And if I give you my personal opinion as a designer, I could never in a million years could predict Pyro Archon to be white-skinned. Plus, most of the characters just look a lot better with dark skin anyways. And by dark skin, I'm not saying you do it extremely dark that it doesn't match with the attire, but a little tan skin that actually look good can still do the trick. And also, who was the one saying Natlon people are forged for battle since birth? Does any of these characters strike you as the people forged for battle and war? This is that Skirk design situation all over again. I will create an entire Natlon design philosophy video. That would be a great idea. Now with all the questions done, one thing that is to be addressed is community situation. Right now, there are people who are defending Hoyoverse, which is already idiotic enough. But, some players who are actually talking about this issue, are starting to call those who are defending Hoyoverse, racists. Look, there can be different idiotic reasons for defending Hoyoverse, like characters are not real, or Genshin is not obligated to make their own original characters tan or black, and things like that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're racist, they're just dumb. No one will care if Genshin create 20 more Fontaine or Liyue or Mondstadt characters white, but if they will create Natlon and Samarif characters white, obviously it will be an issue. Let's do some ranting session here. There are some idiots in the community who ask the question, you all always talk about whitewashing, but why no one talks about blackwashing in Genshin Impact? Well, because there is no blackwashing happening in Genshin. Why talk about something that doesn't even exist? That's one of the dumbest arguments I've heard. Like, give me one character that was blackwashed. Is it Kaya? Or Sinya? Like seriously? Grow up and shut up from your non-existent problems. We will talk about blackwashing when Genshin will create 90% of Liyue cast black, just like they did with Samaru Forest. But you know that won't happen. Make a character, name it fucking Shin Shan Shun Chi Chu Cha Cha, and make it black. Then we will complain about blackwashing. As long as this doesn't happen, shut up. And I would say the same for those who say, those who are complaining about Natlon characters being white, are being racist towards white people. Yeah? No. You don't expect them to stay silent when their culture and presentation is being stolen and whitewashed for the sake of entertainment of people of some other culture. Let's suppose if Genshin was an Iranian game and they create places called Liyue, Inazuma, Fontaine, and put hijab on characters like Ningguang, Yunjin, Ayaka, Kokomi, Charlotte, Navia, etc. Those same hypocrites who say people who speak up for the matter of Natlon are racist towards white people and that it's Hoyoverse own game and their own original characters, they can do whatever they want with that, and that these are fictional characters so who cares, will start barking about oppression, extremism, stereotypicality, and whatever the fuck they could find in order to villainize them. Who knows, maybe even the game developers will be assassinated by some very respectable justice warriors under the assumption that these developers had WMDs hiding in their game files. Anyways, this whole argument of, Genshin is a fictional world, and any kind of racial depiction is nullified because of that, is straight up dumb fuckery from anyone who says something like that. And you know who said something like that? Genshin developers themselves. Their reply for this issue is that this is a work of fiction and is not related to actual people, events, group, or organization. What a bold face lie. It was not a work of fiction when Zhongli was buffed, 
It was not fiction when Yoon Jin was introduced. It is a work of fiction when it comes to characters' skin color, but when it comes to landscape and music and characters' dressing, it is not a work of fiction anymore. How about you shut the fuck up and fix the issues you created? Characters are not real. Who cares? A famous quote, used by every degenerate, every homo, every pedo, and everyone who wants to get away with the shit they pull up, that upsets good people who try to speak up against an actual problem. Anyways, now for the conclusion of the video, we should have small discussion about this most famous question nowadays. Is Hoyoverse racist? Players don't like to call this company racist because they themselves don't want to be cancelled. But you already know, I never gave a fuck about my reputation when it comes to stating absolute facts. I've already been called an extremist, a terrorist, a virtue signaler, a trash human being, and all kinds of whatever people who hate me love to call me. But it is blatantly obvious that Genshin is racist. When Sinyan was the worst character from all of Liyue, and Kaya was one of the initial four characters, we still had hope that it's no big deal. Maybe more colored characters will be released and will feel good to play. With the release of Sumeru, the entire forest cast was whiter than fucking Chinese themselves. But we still had a hope that maybe Deya will save Genshin from its racist title. But when Deya was absolutely raped by Hoyoverse and thrown away in a garbage can, it just made it confirm to me that Hoyo is 100% racist without a doubt. I wanted to create a video on why it's too late for Hoyo to create dark-skinned characters in Natlon. And for me, unless they don't buff Deya and make her a limited character, which will obviously never happen, they will stay racist for me. That's it. Even if they create entire Natlon cast as dark-skinned, they will still stay racist as long as they don't make Sumeru Forest characters dark and buff Deya. I was already vocal about it, and I will always be vocal about it. Now let's talk about why do they do that? Why do they make characters light-skinned? And the answer is pretty simple. Because majority of their audience is from East Asia. And there, having light skin is a huge factor for their beauty standards. So in order to sell these characters in their regions, they need to be of light skin. And just to quote that again, whitewashing a character that represents people of certain culture and ethnicities, in order to sell them to the people of different culture and ethnicities is a huge example of racism. If this simple fact is so hard for you to understand, then you shouldn't have even clicked on this video in the first place. But if you have already reached to this point, I am amazed. But if their product is released globally, they need to start giving a shit about other people as well. And the last question to end this video, does racism actually matters? The answer is no. Only hierarchy matters. If you have power, you call the shots. You can manipulate people into thinking that freedom fighters are terrorists, brave people were cowards, no one except one group of people are responsible for every advancement in human society, you can rewrite history, you can do pretty much everything. If you have power, you can alter the reality of this real world. What makes you think whitewashing a bunch of fictional characters is such a big deal in grand scheme of things? What is going to happen? Nothing. We will talk about it for a week at most, and then we all will forget everything about it. Just like we forgot everything about Deya and Sumeru. Talk about it all you want. Nothing will happen at the end. Did anything happen when 3 pulls drama was happening? I already told everyone. Even if you boycott Genshin, as long as you are playing different Hoyoverse games, they won't give a damn. And if you want Genshin to change, you need to start World War 3. That was an example guys. Meaning you have to do so much more than even what happened in that 3 pulls drama. You need at least millions of players boycotting all the games of Hoyoverse. You have to make the entire company bankrupt, and you know that won't happen. So there is actually no point in dwelling about it. But let me tell you, just because you know nothing will happen at the end, doesn't mean you should not speak about it. Boycott Genshin if you want, it won't do shit. Boycott the entire Hoyoverse, and you might get a chance of the company start acting, or pretending like it cares. It will always be like that. Either I am right this time, or I will be proven right in the future. Because when I said boycotting Genshin won't do anything unless you don't boycott other games as well, everyone started villainizing me. Now they're all saying you should boycott the entire Hoyoverse. Why? Now they came to the understanding that if you give your money to Genshin, or you give money to Honkai Star Rail, or you give money to Zenless Zone Zero, at the end of the day, that money is going in the same pocket. But I won't do that now. They're racist, yes. But I don't give a fuck. I like the characters and I like the game. I will play it. And I'll say the same to you too. Everything I said in my video, just listen and forget. If you like the game, play it and don't give a fuck about what anyone says about you. And if you hate Genshin, why did you have that game installed till now? Don't play it. Who is forcing you to play the game you don't like? And who is forcing you to stop playing the game that you like? It's your device, your internet, and your choice. No need to let some fake online judge decide what you should play and what you shouldn't. I still remember last time, 
The one who started Boycott Genshin was excessively criticized because he couldn't come to the fact that you must suck dicks of bigger content creators if you want to reach bigger audience for the cause. And I already tried to make myself a hero, inspired by a garbage who called everyone he didn't like trash because of his own headcanon, while simultaneously preaching how everyone should respect each other and no one should force their headcanons on other people's throats. Or a bitch who taunted me and laughed at me because I happened to like a fictional character, while simultaneously crying and getting all worked up when someone made a harmless joke on her VTuber model. When I started YouTube, I thought maybe it is a good place with wholesome community. But now I've come to terms with everything. People come to me saying this content creator called you an extremist, or that content creator made a joke on you, or this content creator called you trash, what do you want to say in return? I reply yes, I am an extremist, a joke, a trash human being, a hypocrite, and everything they say about me is true. Tell them if they can do anything about it. There is a saying that goes like this, if you want me to die, come and kill me. If you can't do it, then stop whining and do something better with your life. Dogs who bark don't know how to bite. Anyways, who cares at this point? As long as I am enjoying the game, I will play it. And that's all there is to it. But it doesn't mean I won't speak up if I think something bad is happening in the game. But I will only leave the game when I stop having fun. If you want to go extra step, you can boycott the game if you want. I never cared about if you boycott Genshin or other Hoyoverse games or not, but I always appreciated those who spoke for the betterment of the game. And that's my whole stance in all of this racial drama happening in the community. See ya. Peace.